All right, here's where things stand with the Admiral set. I finished replacing the last of the bad mica caps in the IF cans. Went through the alignment procedure once again. They all peaked the way they should be. Also, for the heck of it, I went through and checked the few domino type mica caps in the audio circuit down in here. They all check out okay. Also, tried out a few modifications on this set. One in particular I thought was interesting was that the really early versions, like what I've got, actually had AVC on the audio. That's what this is for here. So they pick off the signal from the output of the ratio detector and it gets fed back through here and it controls the gain I believe on this second tube here. What I found so puzzling was uh, for a while I was working off the rider schematic. It's not on it. On both this version or this little inset showing the early version. And then I went through and looked at the 18 or, or so uh, production run revisions they list on the riders. And yeah, sure enough, one of them was they took out the AVC and just grounded that point, which leaves the audio tubes running wide open, full gain, maximum gain. I tried that with an alligator clip. It didn't make any difference. So, here is where we are at. While it's warming up, I'll just go ahead and tell you the over-the-air Channel 6 Pseudo FM station sounds fantastic. Booming volume, even with the control nearly all the way down. But remember, that's really a radio station, and the audio carrier is boosted much higher than it would be in a normal TV station. And right now, I've got it running off the usual converter box I'm using during all my restorations. And it's kind of back where it was way back in... <laughs> Uh, part something of this restoration where the volume's okay if I crank it up all the way except it sounds lousy there's noise in the background now I've tested and replaced and swapped out everything including the tuner and the tubes and I've checked everything uh, nothing's helping I'll show you what channel 6 is like So that sounds fine. So that got me thinking, well, what about my source here? So far I've only been testing with two things, either the over-the-air pseudo TV station channel 6 and this converter box. How about we try something else? So I pulled out this little rinky-dink RF modulator. It takes composite inputs and left and right stereo and you can output on channel 3 or 4. That just so happens that my converter box has composite outputs. You don't have to use the RF output. So I'm feeding this into this box and I'll switch the cable feeding the TV from this box to this box. Let's see if it makes any difference. Alright, so now we're going through my cat antenna, converter box, composite output, RF modulator, into the TV's antenna via a ballon. Now let's see what we get. How about that? Not perfect. Still a slight buzz, but it's one heck of a lot better. So, I think that's going to be it. <laughs> as far as doing the troubleshooting and all that. Now, I'd, I'd heard... Early on when I started doing vintage TV restorations and guys were asking what kind of source to use as the analog television transmission ceased. And I heard warnings that some of these converter boxes, the RF outputs weren't so great. 
especially on really early TVs. And remember, this is Admiral's first chassis. This, uh, I think, may be the oldest chassis I've restored to date. It's not only their first chassis, it's an early, re it's like the first revision, or one of the first revisions of their first chassis. And I've also been warned on other early sets like this RCA 630 TS and the RCA 621 TS. The audio on these isn't so great either. And they're very sensitive to your source. And again, these converter boxes aren't so great. And I believe if you go way back and watch when I was struggling with other Admiral chassis, I think during my 24 C16 restoration, maybe. Uh, I ended up taking, I think, the output of one of these boxes and running it through a blonder tongue modulator, which have controls on the front. You can actually adjust the level independently of the audio and video carrier. And uh, I had luck with just cranking up the audio carrier via that. So. What I'm getting at is, this may be very well working exactly the way it's supposed to, and this is as good as it's going to get. So, I'm going to do some final tweaking with the uh, pattern generator, and then uh, put this back into the set. And then, it just so happens, I've kind of been working on another Admiral 30A1 set on the side. And I want to see if I can very quickly get that one wrapped up to the point where it's working and compare the two. The other Admiral I've been poking around with over the past few months is the chassis from my Admiral 30A15. That's one I picked up I think last fall and it was in pretty miserable condition. Chassis is very rusty, cabinet kinda nasty. Um, so what I've been poking around doing over the last few months is removing the rust. I broke down, for example, the power chassis and took everything off. Transformers, unsettered all the connections, took the chokes out, audio output transformer. Got all the rust off. I didn't bother painting it, I just uh, kind of treated it with um, some oil so the rust wouldn't come back. And I uh, painted up the transformers and got the rust off the hardware. And it's all ready to go back together now. So it'll be kind of like building a kit. And I want to do this now because this sets very fresh in my memory. And I can compare this chassis to the other one while I rewire it. So I'm having to refer back to the SAMs or the schematic, which would be kind of painstaking. Or looking at the reference photos I took while taking it apart. And same goes for the top chassis. Now for the top chassis, things are a little bit different. Here's the upper chassis from that set, or <laughs> what's left of it. I started stripping this one down too. And actually re did remove quite a bit of the rust and filled in the pits and primed it. Uh, but I, I then lucked into an Admiral 30A1, just the top chassis. That's in much better condition. And I decided to forget about it. I'm not going to go through and uh, and put this whole thing all back together. I'll just use this for spare parts. In fact, that is where the tuner came from that's in this set right now. It's working much better than the one that it came with. So, you know, it's a nice luxury to have a, a spare chassis. I just guess I have some bad controls. I can get them out of this. Now, the one that I am restoring is one that I actually did show briefly before when I was hunting around for that... Uh, power resistor inside the high voltage cage and I was going through set after set after set trying to find a good one. It's the one that was on the back porch and uh, I just showed it briefly while pulling the resistor out. It's definitely very nice to have two chassis side by side for comparison while you work on them. So here's the one I've restored and here's the one I'm working on. Just finished remounting both power transformers, the choke, and the audio output transformer. Now I'm wiring them in. Just finished up with the smaller of the transformers. Now I've got the big one to do. So some slight production differences, but the uh, important thing is all the wires are the same color. So like here we've got yellow, green, and black. And we do here too. Black being the primary and the green is 6.3 volt filament supply 
and yellow is the supply for the big 5U4 rectifier. On the other side of the transformer we've got three wires, one with the stripe goes to ground and the other two go to the plates of the 5U4 rectifier. In other words, this is the high voltage secondary. And these two guys, I believe, are for the damper tube on the upper chassis because they just get routed over to this terminal strip here which goes to wires that go to this harness that go to the top chassis. Okay, I guess I'm done with this power supply and audio amp chassis. I referred both to the schematic and to the other chassis right next to it. And now comes the part I really hate. I'm going to try it out for the very first time. So I'll put this chassis aside and pull out the upper chassis, which I know is working. Hook it up to this guy and uh, carefully monitor it uh, while I turn it on. Okay, here we go. First power up test of the rebuilt power supply. Tubes are lighting up. It's a good sign on both chassis. Don't see any arcing over inside the two rectifiers or blue plating or you know <laughs> any problems. And we've got a raster. No sound though. Not even a hiss. Oh, maybe because I don't have the speaker hooked up. <laughs> I really like the look of newly painted transformers, but it does make a hassle when you're working with them on the workbench because you don't want to scratch them. So while I had this flipped over, I kept putting pads underneath it and I got a napkin here between the speaker and the transformer. And hopefully, I'll get this thing all done and back into the cabinet before I scratch those up. Anyways, let's try power-up test number two. Ooh, didn't like the look of that. I, think I saw a little bit of uh, something in the 5U4, the little spark. Yeah, you see that? It's an arc over. That uh, could be a bad 5U4, but it might also mean that there's an excessive load somewhere. can happen when you first turn these on. Um, it's going right into a 47 microfarad filter cap. One of these two guys. I'll be putting a bit of a strain on the 5U4. That being said, seems to be working alright, so I'll try to put a different 5U4 in there. Alright, uh, other than 5U4 being a little funky, seems like this supply and amp is working just fine. I let it run for about 10 minutes and everything seems to be okay. Transformers are cool, uh, caps are cool, uh, fil a filter choke and audio output transformer seem okay. Tubes obviously got really hot, but uh, anyway, so I just put a different 5U4, and uh, let's check out this guy when I turn it on. Dang, that did too. Huh. Same side as well. Well, huh, 
kind of wish I paid more attention to the other chassis now. I suppose I could pull it up here and take a look. Uh, I'm going to try one more 5v4 before I do that. Alright, let's see how this 5v4 does. These are all GB versions of the 5v4, by the way. Oh, that one is too. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, so I guess I'll have to pull out the other power supply and see how it reacts, because uh, it sure doesn't seem like there's anything wrong with this. The set's working just like it did with the other power supply. And uh, this 5v4 is fairly straightforward in the circuit. Uh, there's not a whole lot going on with it. Um, let's see. Pull it up here quickly. Uh, Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, so. Transformer. Filament supply. Secondary. Goes off the uh, tube. 140, 140 microfarad cap. 200 choke. Another 40 microfarad. And it goes to the other chassis. So, as far as this uh, chassis goes, here's a tube. Here's a choke. Here's the two caps. Unless there's something wrong with one of these caps, um, I don't uh, know what the problem could be because we know the upper chassis is working all right. I pulled the original power supply back up on the chassis and let's see if it has the same issue with the 5U4. Yep, sure does. Let's try another one. Sure. So I'm thinking um, maybe I just shouldn't be using 5U4 GBs. Yeah, so a little blue spark. So it originally was in this. It was just a plain old 5U4 G. The B I think can handle more um, current, but there might be some other uh, s slight uh, differences too. Yeah, I didn't see any flasher with this. This might have a higher internal resistance. Um, so it doesn't have that problem on startup. No, well, then again, <laughs> maybe not. All right, well, since the problem exists in both of the power supply chassis, I, it, it seems extremely unlikely it's anything wrong with the power supply, which means could be something wrong with the upper chassis so yet another reason to finish restoring the other one so I can also check out on this issue that is weird though because so the voltage readings on the set seem fine and it's working fine so what's the deal <laughs> uh, sure I could just replace it with some solid state diodes and not worry about it uh, I did check the filter choke in both and they both measure okay yeah, I'm using 47 microfarad caps, and the original were 40s. Could that uh, slight increase in capacitance make that big of a difference? And these are probably lower ESR than the originals too, so it'd be a little bit more of a load when it first turns on. I don't know. I mean, I could replace it with with uh, silicon diodes and throw a couple power resistors in series. If I was really concerned. Because um, eventually, if I keep running it and keep arcing over the 5v4, it's going to kill it. I did a little research on the 5u4, and uh, it turns out that 40 microfarad is the maximum recommended input filter capacitor. So, me putting in a 47 uh, is not a very good idea. So uh, I think the simplest thing to do is simply drop it down to 33, and I do have some 33 at 450 volt on hand. Now I'm really glad I went with this construction technique where I have these <laughs> exposed. If I had recrimped around the bottom, I'd be very unhappy right now. I did use some hot glue to hold these together, but I can heat that up and it'll just soften right up. And... Uh, 
Not sure how it's wired, but regardless, I'll remove the top guy. Much easier than the bottom guy. Because I uh, added some little extension wires. This is the ground, and that's the positive. So I can clip those off, heat up the glue, pop this guy out, pop a 33 in. It should be pretty quick, and uh, hopefully that will take care of the problem. Okay, here is the 33 microfarad cap in place of a 47. And this is the side that goes right to the 5U4. So it goes 5U4, this filter cap, this filter choke, then the other cap. In other words, there's a bit of a resistance, you might say, between the larger cap. And they say that in the application notes that if uh, you need more filtering, that if using a, a cap 40 megafarad or less doesn't cut it, put a larger one after the filter choke so you don't overwhelm the 5U4 on power-up. Right, well, so let's see if that made any difference. I sure hope so. Damn, it didn't. Well, that time I was okay, but maybe it's because it was warmed up. I'll try a different too. I mean, if I have to, I'll go down to like 10 microfarad or something, and just to uh, just to get over this little <laughs> hurdle here, or I'll just leave it alone while I uh, restore the other chassis and see how it goes. Yeah, same problem. All right. Kind of had a feeling I might, because 47 versus 40 is not that big of a difference. Uh, so I'm just going to let this go for now, and I'll restore the other chassis, see how the power supplies react um, with uh, those sets as well. Oh, another possible thing I can do too is throw in uh, like a thermistor, or like an, a current and rush limiter, like a CL90 or something in series with this just sort of a high cold resistance. And as the set warms up, the resistance would drop off uh, considerably from like 120 ohms down to 3 or 4 ohms to give this a real soft start. Since I came this far, I decided that what the heck I would go ahead and do one more test. And I just disconnected the capacitor entirely. So now it's rectifier, filter choke, and then just one cap. This also will allow me to illustrate how to tell if you've got an open filter cap because it's going to affect the performance of the set. But we also still get some pretty bad flashover on the rectifier. So there's something something not right somewhere. So what we see in the set now is we've got some waviness along the edges of the screen. That is from the ripple on the power supply. And they slowly climb up. Also very hard to get vertical lock. It's become very sensitive now to the vertical hold centering. In fact, I'm, I have a very hard time getting it to lock at all. So if you ever see some waviness in your picture, it's a good indication you've got a bad filter cap. Alright, so I'm definitely going to put this one on the back burner for now. I'm going to pop this chassis back into the cabinet and uh, one of the lower chassis too to clear off some room. I'm going to pull in the other chassis and try to recap it as quickly as I can. Hopefully uh, this weekend in one or two nights. Now getting at that Admiral cabinet, it's a little bit trickier now than it was a few weeks ago because I rearranged and uh, stacked up some sets in this corner to make room for the stuff coming from the East Coast. So I'm going to pull it out now. It's way back there in the corner. But this also gives me an opportunity to give you guys a heads up on where uh, things are heading, I hope. So here's Philco Holiday. Very close to being done. Basically, just need to do a little bit of cosmetic work on the cabinet. 
And then it's likely that I'll sell it off. We'll see. Uh, same goes for my predicted tandem sets. I'll probably keep one or two and sell off at least one of them. So yes, the set I'll keep. I'll get to it eventually. Motorola sets I also want to sell off. So while I'm at this, I'm going to pull it out and kind of put it aside. I want to dust it off, and I know I still have a couple minor repairs left to make on it. Uh, also, I got a back from a very similar set. I want to modify Sully so that it fits on here right. And, uh, you know, polish it up and get it all tuned up and running well. And then uh, see if I can sell it. So if anybody's interested, let me know. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so here, here's this set. So the chassis that's currently in this is actually the one that I want to now pull out and restore. So I'm just going to swap out this chassis with the other one. Oh, and I should also mention that the Sentinel also is a long overdue, um, it's long overdue rather for a facelift and a little bit of a tune-up. still has the original picture tube in it, which was kind of weak to begin with. Plus when I restored this set, I didn't have all the fancy test equipment and tube testers I have now. So I just so happen to have a nice aluminized 16 KP4 pitcher tube I want to pop in here. And I want to go through and do an alignment and chuck all the tubes and so on. Because although it is working now, well you'll see in an upcoming video, it's not working as well as it should be. I almost forgot, there's actually a few other reasons why I wanted to film over in this area. One is that once those Motorola's out of the way, and this is where I would like to put the Dumont Clifton. It's exactly two feet wide, and it should fit, well actually I know it'll fix, I already measured, and it will fit right in between the Sentinel and the Admiral. This is also one of the safest places I could put it where it's still viewable and enjoyable, but out of harm's way. Where it is right now is near a doorway and I've had to be very careful the last couple weeks to not bump into it as I go by. I also get a little bit of a sneak peek at the Filco uh, 3862. If you recall an eyelash had landed on the lacquer which has now gotten dusty. I was able to carefully scrape it out and I sprayed some lacquer over that area. It needs to be buffed out a little bit. Um, and I did put uh, temporarily the chassis back in there. It needs a little bit of work. Need to repaint the uh, screws here, but uh, very close to being done, so you'll see a video on that coming up soon. And then this guy, which, uh, although it's been restored, could also use a tune-up, but there's something else that I really would like to tackle. If you recall the grill cloth on this, um, was kind of rough and it was falling off and I ended up cleaning it and I it didn't seem like it'd be salvageable I didn't think I could reattach it so I ended up taking some burlap and bleaching it and gluing, gluing it on because it, uh, it looks okay but I actually did hang on to the original grill cloth and I want to take a stab at gluing this back on uh, it shrunk a little bit when I cleaned it and it's fraying a little bit but I think if I go painstakingly and just kind of glue it and, some, and manipulate the fibers that, you know, what the heck, I might as well give it a shot. But, you know, that's, that's pretty low priority, but it's been something I've been wanting to get to for a long time. All right, here is the next patient up on the workbench. This came out of a combo set in a basement of an old building near Wrigley Field a couple years ago. The seller was basically giving it away for free on, on Craigslist, or maybe I gave him 20 bucks, I don't recall, but huge set. The cabinet was in miserable condition, so I just parted it out right there in the basement. I, I pulled the chassis out, and um, a few other bits and pieces. I think I saved the speaker and, you know, whatever else I could grab. Well, it turns out it is a 30A1 chassis, identical revision to the other one I just restored. So you can see it's the same tuner, it's the same type of concentric tuning coils up here and, and all the rest of it. So that's that's the reason I really wanted to do this, aside from the being able to compare the two side by side and the issue with the 5U4 flashing over and all that. Uh, this is really fresh in my mind, so uh, shouldn't be any problem. And uh, I've got enough spare parts so I can replace any and anything and everything in this. The yoke, flyback, whatever, i got spare parts for it. It's filthy, no question about that, but 
I don't see any signs of corrosion. Which is pretty amazing considering how nasty that basement was. I have not uh, really done anything with it since I, since I got it. It's been on the back porch uh, under covers for uh, the last couple of years. Obviously a bunch of tubes are missing. But uh, otherwise it looks to be intact. Uh, pitcher tube does test okay. So we're all right there. So I guess I'll start out with just cleaning off the chassis a bit. Uh, there must have been something I salvaged out of the combo set prior interconnect to the AM FM radio or something. It's really not part of this. Uh, so I'll, I'll clean it off first and then uh, get to it. Um, but right now I'm going to flip it on its side so we can take a quick little survey of what's underneath. Oh, <laughs> I've seen this on one or two sets before. Now I, I think I know why. When you pop out the tuner, this goes right into it. It's not a plug or anything. It's firmly attached. So you can either unsolder it here, or perhaps somebody just cut this off and uh, <laughs> splice it back in. When I do it, I always unsolder them up here. It seems to be a neater job to me, but I would guess that's why that happened. So here's the underside, and looks fairly similar to the other set. Uh, mostly original, but a few repairs here and there. Got a newish white cap right there. I uh, don't know what happened to that guy. It's just kind of hanging there by one end. Uh, that resistor's been replaced. As have one or both of the ones down there. Those are usually those crappy white uh, sand covered ones that go bad so often. See some bulging like on that guy down there and that guy there. So no I'm not going to try to power this set up as is and see if it works because I see way too many bulging caps to uh, really expect this set to do anything useful if I did attempt it. Alright, so I'm not going to bore you guys to death. I'm just going to get to it and start to clip, clip, clip and replace all these paper caps and might as well replace these while I'm at it, these power resistors. And of course we know the big power resistor is bad in the high voltage cage where I already took it out. So I'll replace that as well. I think it'll go pretty darn quick. And uh, of course I've said that before. And then the big question is... Uh, will it work and to what extent will it work? Because uh, between you and me, as much as I enjoy the Admirals, this has taken a lot longer than I wanted it to and I really want to get back to other projects. So if any kind of weird problems do creep up with this, I may just put it on the back burner and get back to other stuff. <laughs> 